to those who are visiting with us. We are here today to give our opening prayer to the Lord. Would you bow with me? Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you with a humbleness in our hearts and a thanksgiving on our lips. Thanking you for what you have done for us from our earliest existence to this present time. Lord, we ask as we get ready to go into this service that everything that we do will be pleasing and acceptable to you. We ask this and all blessings in your son, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Welcome once again to the worship services of Maypole Avenue Church of Christ. And we're just so delighted that you decided to tune in and worship with us virtually. And for those of you here in the building, 
We thank God for your presence as well. Help me if you would this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. Amen. We're so thankful, so thankful for this another worship opportunity. We, we know that COVID changed a lot of things, but one thing it could not stop, and that is our worship of our God and his Christ. This morning, the passage chosen for our examination comes from the book of Exodus. The chapter is 33. We will begin reading at verse number 12 and read through and including verse number 23. And if you go there, you will find these words. And Moses said unto Jehovah, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And Jehovah said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight. I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, Show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of Jehovah before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And Jehovah said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand up on a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Show us thy glory. Show us thy glory. Moses is talking to God, and it's a time of testing. He had to steal away and, and, and talk to God. Anybody ever had occasion where you just had to get away from everybody and talk to God? Oh, the songwriter says, there are days I'd like to be all alone with Christ, my Lord. I can tell him all my troubles, all alone. Moses is talking to God. And we see three things in this conversation. We see God's rejection. We see God's repentance. And then we see God's revelation. First, we see God's rejection. Moses had been talking with God and he had just received some distressing news. 
in verses two and three, God says that he will not go with Israel into Canaan because they are a stiff necked people and he might destroy them on the way. He said, I'll send an angel with you. See, angels do as they are told. He said, the angel is going to drive out the inhabitants of the land, but I'm not going with you. What a terrible, terrible testimony of God's people that God said, if I go with you, I know y'all going to make me destroy you before we get there. So I'm going to send an angel with you. I'm going to let you go on into Canaan, but I'm not going with you. They have angered God so much. They have disappointed God so much. They have disobeyed God so much. They have disrespected God so much that he refused to go with them into the Canaan land because he knew that if he stuck around them, they were going to make him destroy them. Now, this was not a question of location because God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time. He knows every secret thing and he's always aware of where his people are and what his people do. However, the concept of Jehovah being with them is a powerful one. See, because God is not with the unrighteous. God is not with the disobedient. God is not with the carnal. God is not with the heathen. He is with those who honor and obey him. Look at the righteousness of God. I promise the land to you. I'm going to keep my promise, but you are a stiff necked people. You are stubborn and difficult to God. It, it, it always intrigued me that, that the creator of all things, the creator of language, chose out of all the words he could have used, he chose to call Israel a stiff-necked people. I try to turn you one way and you won't turn. I try to guide you one way and you won't go. I show you who I am by my power, but you won't obey. I give you instructions, but you do what you want to do. You are a stiff-necked people. We cannot risk God's rejection. Our aim must be to be found faithful in his sight. Moses had proven his faith in God and thus revealed his faithfulness. He had proven that he could rely on God, that he would rely on God and thus proven his faithfulness. God said, you have found grace in my sight. Brothers and sisters, how are you showing God your faithfulness? Make worship, honor him, sing in the service, Pray without ceasing. Give as God has prospered you. But that's not all. How can we prove our faithfulness? Tell others about Christ. Invite the sinner to church. Comfort the bereaved. Tend to the sick. Pray for the distressed. But that's not all. Lift up your voices in praise. Bow your head in humility. Speak of his wonders with amazement. Listen attentively to his word, but that's not all. What else do I need to do? In order to prove my faith, I must learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. In order to prove my faith, I must learn how to trust in the Lord always. See, what we don't, we don't recognize that too many times we're trusting in other things. That paycheck is important. I use it to take care of my family, but I'm not relying on that job or that check. I'm relying on the Lord. When I drive, I buckle my seatbelt. My car has anti-lock brakes airbags and skid control, but when trouble meets me on the highway, I'm not relying 
on the engineering ability of the automaker. I'm relying on God. I believe the doctors are smart and know what they're doing. I believe that the pharmacist is accurate and fills my prescription properly. I believe that the therapist is skilled and is doing what she thinks is best for my recovery. But in order for me to get well, I got to rely on God. See, these are but tools in the hands of the master. But our health, our well-being comes from God. And when you rely on anything but God, you risk God's rejection. Israel had not learned to depend on God. So God rejected him. God said, you're stiff-necked. He will still keep his promise. But if your actions are such that he will not accompany you because you are going to make him destroy you, you have brought on God's rejection. And so when Moses heard this, Moses said, wait a minute. You didn't tell us that you weren't going to go with us. He said, if you don't go, don't send us. Verse number 15. How will we know that we found grace in your sight if you don't go with us? Moses' faithfulness changed God's mind. So if we saw God's rejection. Now we see God's repentance. Verse 17 shows that God said, I will do this thing as thou hast spoken. God saw Moses' dedication, not to the promise, but to his presence. Pharaoh had been vanquished. The Red Sea had been crossed. Manna had come from heaven. And all the law had been given, all with the presence of God. Water came from the rock with the presence of God. Disputes and rebellion had been put down all with the presence of God. And Moses said, don't leave me now. Has anybody here had the presence of God in your life? Anybody here seen God come through for you and you didn't, when you didn't know what to do? Do you eat every day? Do you have the luxury of standing at your closet and scanning from left to right to see what it is that I'm going to wear today? then you know that God has come through for you. You ought to be like Moses. Don't leave me now. Look at what the faithfulness of Moses did. It changed God's mind. In verse 3, God said, I'm not going with this stiff-necked people. But Moses pleaded and showed his faith in God. And by verse 17, God said, I'll go. When you show your faithfulness, it gets God's attention. Who knows if, if, if your faithfulness will change God's mind? Who knows if what you're facing is a test to see if you will yield to his will? Who knows if the issue you face is a challenge to see how much you're going to depend on him? Moses changed God's mind by his dedication to the God who brought them up, brought them out, and promised to bring them in. This COVID thing is a challenge. It's a challenge in our economics. It's a challenge in our relationships. And it's a challenge in our worship. Maybe God is looking to see how we're going to handle this challenge. What are you going to do? When you can't go to the building. What are you going to do when you don't have everybody around you in Bible class? What are you going to do when you can't have fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ? What are you going to do when they lock the doors of the church and nobody can come in? What are you going to do? Maybe God is trying to see what you're going to do. So we saw God's rejection. We saw God change his mind, God's repentance. And now, let's look at God's revelation. Moses asked God for two things. First, he says, 
show me thy way so that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. Lord, show me thy way. Perhaps Moses already knew that the way of man is not in him. He can't even direct his own steps. Perhaps Moses already knew that without you, Lord, we can't do anything. Moses had already seen the power of God and begun to learn about God. How many today want to know the way of God? The way of God is to hear his son. Hebrews chapter one, verse one, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets had in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom he also he made the world. So Hebrew writer says the way of God is to hear his son. More of us ought to be saying, show me thy way. I get it wrong sometimes. I listen to the wrong people sometimes. My fleshly thinking takes over sometimes. So I need you to show me thy way. I've got too much experience with doing things my way. My way doesn't always work. My way isn't always best. My way hurts others sometimes. But his way is right and reliable. His way is tried and true. Show me thy way. His way is safe and secure. His way doesn't change, doesn't disappoint, doesn't falter, and does not fail. His way is eternal, is gracious, is empowering, and is comforting. Show me thy way so I can please you. Show me thy way so I can know you. Show me thy way so I can honor you. Show me thy way, not the popular way, not other man's way, not the wrong way, but his way, his way. Show me your way. Moses says, show me your way. Show me what it is you want me to do. Show me, show me what it is you want me to know. Show me what it is you want me to tell your people. Show me the direction you want me to follow. Where do we get his way now? We get it from his word. And I'm glad God gave us his word. That way we don't have to guess. We don't have to make it up as we go along. God has already given us his way. Second request that Moses makes is for God to show him his glory. What a bold request. I wanted Moses to really know what he was asking. Man was not made to view spiritual things and let alone the God of heaven who is spirit. Man can't even look at the sun too long, let alone the one who set the sun blazing in the sky. So God said, I'll hide you in the rock and cover your eyes while I pass by. I'll let you see my back parts, but not my face. Look at this privilege granted to Moses, the faithful servant of God. God is about to show him his glory. He wouldn't even speak to the people, but he's about to show Moses his glory. Do y'all see this disconnect? He said, I'm not going with y'all to Canaan land because y'all going to make me kill you. But he will show Moses his glory. Why? Because Moses, Moses has proven to be a faithful servant. He said, now, no man can see my face and live, but I'm going to show you my back parts. He's too awesome and too majestic. No man can comprehend his greatness, but God is about to show Moses his glory. God said he would let his goodness pass before him. This is but one facet of a multifaceted God. 
God is just, but he's not getting ready to show him his justice. God is powerful, but he's not getting ready to show him his power. God gets angry, but he's not getting ready to show him his anger. God loves, but he's not getting ready to show him his love. He's getting ready to show him his goodness. He is so majestic that he could, that Moses could not comprehend the entire glory of God. So God only showed him the back part. Oh, David said it right. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God is so awesome that if you tried to take a video, you couldn't capture all of his glory. If you tried to take notes and write it down, you run out of paper. You could not tell all about God's graciousness, but look at what how gracious God is. He hid Moses' face. He was gracious enough, not only to show some, but to hide some. He knew Moses couldn't take it, so he had to hide some of himself from Moses. I thank God for what I know, but sometimes I thank God for what he hides from me. I can barely comprehend what he shows me. I know I'd be overwhelmed by what he doesn't show me. So God in his mercy shows Moses only the back parts of his goodness. I'm so glad that God is wiser than we are. I'm so glad that God is smarter than we are. Don't you know, sometimes as parents, we have to keep back some things from our children because we know they're not ready for them yet. Isn't that right? We know there's going to be a time when you can eat solid food. But for right now, you have to have some pureed food. You have to have some, some oatmeal and some, some milk and some mashed up peaches. You have to have something that you can handle because I love you too much to give you a pork chop because I know you can't handle that yet. So God is looking at Moses and saying, okay, I'll show you some of me, but I'm going to hide some from you. Thank God for what he hides from us. I don't know what Moses saw, but in the next chapter, the Bible say his, his face shone. He was shining. Chapter 34, verse 29. He was shining just from seeing the back part. Can you imagine what would have happened if he had seen all of God's glory? Whatever he saw changed him. We won't see God as proof that he is with us. We won't see God as proof that he hears us, but the goodness of God gave us his son. John 1, 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. God did not physically pass by us, but he showed us Jesus. John said, we beheld his glory, the glory of the Son of God. I didn't see him. I didn't see him when he was transfigured. But through the record of the scripture, God is showing us his goodness. He was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, and crucified on Calvary. He was misquoted, mistreated, and misunderstood. One day, his parents lost him. Evil men lied on him, but God loved him. He came to a sinful world, cared for the poor and the weak, counseled, comforted, and corrected us. He calls us his friend and laid down his life so that we could be saved. He built his church on the truth. He was the son, that he was the son of God, and he's waiting for you to come. If you dedicate your life to him, you too can one day see the glory of God and the glory of his son, Jesus Christ. One day, 
I'll be glorified with him and be able to view his glory, the glory he left to come to this earth. When Jesus came to this earth, he took on humanity, kept his divinity, but he left his glory behind. He was as much God as he was man, but he left his glory behind. John chapter 17, verse number five. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. The glory he had was not brought to this earth. Can you imagine if Jesus brought all of his glory to this earth? Moses could barely see just the hind parts of God's glory. Jesus had to leave his glory in heaven because we couldn't take it. But look what's coming up. In that same chapter, chapter 17, verse number 24, Jesus said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Lord, I want to be where you are so you can show me your glory. I know about your power, but show me your glory. I've experienced your love. Now show me your glory. I praise you for your protection and provision. I want you to show me your glory. I want to behold you in your splendor. I want to live with you forevermore. I want to join with those who sing of your goodness. I want to shout with those who magnify your blessedness. I want to give you all the honor, all the praise, all the respect, all the credit, and all the glory that I can. Take me home with you and you can show me your glory. You too can say, Lord, show me your glory. And you can do that. You can see it by becoming a child of God. One of these days, Jesus is going to come home, come and take us home with him. Then we'll be able to view his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son. We'll be able to see him in all of his majesty, not in his humanity, but in his glory. And we will be glorified with him. But that'll only happen if you are added to the church that he built, the church that's in the Bible, the church of Christ. If you've been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, you'll be able to see the glory of the Lord. If you need to be baptized, you need to let us know. Drop us a line. Let us know. We'll make arrangements to baptize you for the forgiveness of your sins and the Lord will add you to his church. If you need prayer, let us know. We'll pray for you because we've already seen that prayer works. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for worshiping with us. As always, we pray that you will be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. Now it's time for our communion. We celebrate the Lord's Supper every Lord's Day as the early church did, Acts chapter 20, verse number 7. Jesus says, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We need to remember the sacrifice that he made, the debt that he paid, this blood that he shed, the life that he gave. We need to remember, we need to be constantly reminded that he was beaten for us. He was wounded, the Bible says, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was nailed to the cross and gave his life because he loved us. And we take this bread and this cup, which represents his body and his blood, in order to remember how much he gave for us. 
because of how much he loved us. Let us pray for the bread and the cup as we partake of the Lord's Supper today. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for blessing us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the deed that was done for us on Calvary. We pray, righteous God, that you would bless us as we partake of this bread and this cup. Help us to always remember the love that was shown to us. Help us, Lord, to do these things in a way that will be pleasing before thee. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May not take the bread. And now the cup. Now we come to the part where we give back to the Lord a portion of that that he has given to us. We know that God loves a cheerful giver. We also know that God requires that we give back to him the tenth of what we receive, bringing the tithes and the offering into the storehouse. We ask that you would please use one of the three options available for giving your contribution. You may either go to our website and give online, www.mapleavcoc.org. Go to the online button and follow the instructions, or you may place it in the mail, send it to the building, the address is on the screen, or if you so desire, someone will come by and pick it up, or you can drop it off at the building, uh, whichever way uh, pleases you. But we want to make sure that you know that there are three different ways, three different opportunities that you have to give to the Lord. He is such a wonderful giver to us. And we ask that you take this time to give back to him that that is just and right. God bless you. There are something, something I may not know that I may Yeah. 